Fox Business, they talked about the rise of socialism in America, and I'm really interested in hearing what they have to say, uh, probably because they're going to say a lot of stupid things. But this is a two-part clip, and in the end, apparently, one of the hosts is going to admit that capitalism is eventually going to lose to socialism. So we're going to start with this video because I want to see how they arrive at that conclusion and specifically what they say about socialism. And I guess going into this, what I'm looking for is for them to preface this entire conversation with a concrete definition of socialism because the problem with the right is whenever they talk about socialism, they simply use it as a synonym for things that they don't like. So I want to know that before they have this conversation, they're actually, it's grounded in reality with a strong definition of socialism, right? I feel like that isn't too much to ask from a news show that focuses on politics, but either way, let's hear what they have to say. Is a growing segment of the American population that is embracing socialism. Mm. I mean, it's almost hard to believe that they see this as a viable alternative to capitalism, a means to prosperity, the new American dream. So I had to dig. Okay, why? Ask yourself, why would so many Americans view socialism as opposed to capitalism as a means to prosperity? Ask yourself, why would so many people be turned off by capitalism? Could it possibly have anything to do with the fact that capitalism has been a demonstrable failure? Not only has it not led to prosperity for the overwhelming majority of the world, but capitalism has led to the destruction of our entire planet. I, I just, but I can't figure out why people are turning away from uh, capitalism. I don't get it, folks. I mean, uh, from her perspective, to be fair, she's rich, I'm assuming. I mean, if she's not rich, she's well off. She works for Fox News, right? She's on air talent. So she's got some pretty fat paychecks, I'm assuming. Um, so she was able to make it. She was able to live the American dream. But for the overwhelming majority of Americans, for the overwhelming majority of people on the planet, they do not see prosperity through capitalism. It's done nothing but devastate their communities, hollow out institutions, and destroy the one planet that is habitable that we uh, live on. So it's just, it's always funny to me when people, you know, feign shock because of the popularity of socialism, particularly a young, uh, among younger generations. But it's really not that surprising if you think about it. You know, when you have these tyrants at your workplace, when they control the way you speak, the way you dress, when they hold your livelihood over your head and you have no power, you have this power imbalance and this exploitative relationship, it's no wonder why people want to control the means of production and take their lives into their own hands. It just makes sense. So this is, to me, is a very out of touch conversation, but let's let them con uh, continue here. Do a little research on what people are saying about this and Pew Research polls on this constantly. Their latest survey revealed that 60% of registered Democrats today and Democratic leaders have a positive view on socialism. Mm, that's based. nearly two thirds of the party. You should keep that in mind. because so That's where their thinking is all while enjoying the benefits of capitalism. They're sitting in their cushy okay. chairs in a capitalist. That's a hell of an assumption right there. They're enjoying the benefits of capitalism. I don't think so. Do you, <laughs> do you think that if they're opting for a completely different system, it's because they're enjoying the benefits of capitalism? What benefits are those exactly? What benefits are those? I get why, like, these folks here think that there are benefits to capitalism, but for normal Americans, there are zero, zero benefits to capitalism. Zero, okay? So I just, I don't get why they'd say something like that. But again, you know, their perspective is elitist. It's out of touch. So it, it makes sense that they would say that, but it's just shocking to see how out of touch they are. Society thinking and, and tweeting out that socialism is great I do think, going back to your comment about it being a dream, that somehow this is a combination of virtual signaling and fantasy land mm -hmm. that they've built up in their minds and in their, the, the youngest generation. So think about... Okay. No. I mean, let's be extra charitable. Perhaps there are people on Twitter, some within the online left, that try to go out of their way to be the leftiest leftist in all of history. We've all come into contact with people like that. However, though... 
to suggest that most of the popularity for socialism, or the support for socialism, I should say, instead, is driven by people just trying to, like, get clout online. No, it comes down to the economics. Capitalism has failed. It's been a demonstrable failure. And the system is so rotten that it's irredeemable. So they want a new system. So I feel like if they're if they're curious, these are news anchors. They have the resources to talk to people. Why don't you talk to these folks? Ask them why they think socialism is good. And odds are they're going to have some pretty compelling reasons. At least most people will. Sure, you'll see people who are like, yeah, I'm a socialist. And then perhaps they don't articulate very clearly why they like socialism. You're going to find that everywhere, right? But I think that the majority of people who are opting for socialism is because they're so frustrated with capitalism and the system that they were born into that they started to seek out alternatives and socialism just makes sense it just makes sense workers should own the means of production why are these super wealthy elites with increasingly monopolized businesses able to control every aspect of our lives able to censor us they're cracking down when we push for more rights unionization I mean, it, it's only natural that people are going to gravitate towards the main alternative, which is socialism. So, you know, you love to see it, but I, I just, it's funny how confused they are. It's like surprised Pikachu face when you subject people to poverty and devastation due to capitalism. And then, you know, you, you are completely shocked and taken aback by people being turned off by that very system that is oppressing them. They're saying in a time of economic peril, that they want more government in their lives. When the economic perils that we're all living through today, you, you and I talked about it last night, you've got more Americans working two full-time jobs to pay for 40-year high inflation. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got incredible economic policy problems that have been created. You're kind of answering your own question, are you not? You're kind of answering your own question. And to just claim that socialism is big government, that is not a good definition of socialism. I mean, the simplest definition of socialism is workers own the means of production. So, you know, uh, sure, maybe you really don't like big government. I'm not for big government just like inherently. Like, I think that government should be big in some instances when it comes to healthcare. I think that government should be smaller when it comes to our social liberties and civil rights. However, you know, big corporations... They're also destructive. So, you know, what they do is they they don't tell you that the alternative to big government is this neoliberal system where you essentially outsource the former functions of governments to large multinational corporations. So rather than having the government take care of health care, well, we just let corporations do that rather than, you know, having the government just guarantee schooling. Well, maybe we start to outsource that to corporations too. Like every element of society becomes commodified. And so to just say that it's this binary thing of big government or government, government, whatever the meme is, versus, you know, uh, small government, that is not even an oversimplification. It's just flat out incorrect. This administration and now a Federal Reserve tasked with bringing those prices down because of huge government involvement and huge government spending. So yeah, that's such a great point by Emo Dragon. Universal programs equal less bureau bureaucrats making decisions. Exactly. That is exactly it. Asked ourselves how they're defining socialism. And I think that's a really no, no, no. important. How are you defining socialism? Because you haven't done that yet. And the only claim of socialism is big government. Any other, you know, characteristics of socialism you want to point out here? Anything else? Or is it just, big government bad. I don't like the big government. Don't tread on me. Is that literally all that it is? <laughs> because if you think that that's how people uh, view socialism, then that's why there's this disconnect here. Question and all of this. And when Gallup dug in to those who support socialism or go on the record saying they support socialism and want that for this country, You'd be shocked to see that 25% when we're asked with an open uh, space question how they define it did not have an answer. And that's really important, that they're supporting something that they don't understand. Only 25% though. 25%. That's still pretty large, right? 
But what you have to understand is that that is coming from a backlash due to capitalism. Again, like I'm not going to dismiss people who, uh, you know, maybe they identify as socialists, but they can't eloquently state what they believe socialism uh, is or what it means to them. Like, it's not like we get to pick and choose what it is. It is a thing and there is a definition for it. But that 25 percent that she's referring to, I think that that's really a backlash to capitalism. They know that capitalism is bad. And even if they can't articulate what socialism is and they don't know what that system is, all they're opting for is an alternative. It's an anti-capitalist statement. And that sentiment is really important, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I think that the definitions are important. And as she says that 25% don't even know what socialism is, we still haven't seen a definition from this panel yet. So pretty interesting, right? People don't even know what socialism is. Okay, well, what's your definition? As Kyle Kalinske would say, I didn't do it as well, but you know, I think that you all can appreciate the spirit of that little fart gesture. By the way, while they're asking for equality, equality is obviously a huge word that they virtue signal with this constantly. The message should be equal opportunity yes. for all. Yes. But there's no equal opportunity for capitalism. Do you not understand that? The opportunity is gone. We're not going to have better lives than our parents. We're not going to get lucky and become millionaires. We're not going to find a company where we work our way up the ladder and become the CEO. It's just gone. There's zero opportunity, zero opportunity in this country. Everyone is working longer hours for lower wages. They're miserable. And this is why you see the rise of the modern day labor movement where they're opting for unions because they're tired of the exploitation. And rather than, you know, trying to be intellectually curious and find out why socialism is more popular they're talking at their audience and they're saying isn't it bizarre that uh you know people hate the system where it's fucking them over i mean we're rich so i i love it but i can't understand why they wouldn't love it either i get why you love capitalism i understand that you're rich you work for fox news it makes sense why somebody who is very wealthy who did well under capitalism is going to like the system that led them to success but overall, that's not going to be the view or the experience, rather, of the majority. The ruling class is very established and entrenched at this juncture. Absolutely. So this is the second part here. Just to say that Joseph Schumpeter, back in the 20s, uh, when he wrote the, the book Capitalism, Socialism, and Democracy, he said that we're eventually capitalism eventually is going to lose to socialism. Which people forget this. People say, oh, Schumpeter, he's creative destruction guy. He loved capitalism. Well, he did. But he said, what's going to happen is that our country is going to be capitalist for a while, and it's going to get very wealthy. And as we get wealthier and wealthier, we're all going to send our kids to college because we, they don't have to stay home and work in the shop. And the colleges are going to be places that indoctrinate folks to be socialists. And then the graduates of Harvard are going to control the New York Times, and then you're going to have socialists controlling the media. And because they basically control the media, they will control politics and use as a weapon, this Schumpeter wrote this back then, uh, respectability. And so they said that socialists control the media as they're on the largest news network ever. And colleges aren't indoctrinating people. They're just exposing people to alternative ideas. So this whole notion that people are getting indoctrinated in college no, they're getting educated. And once you are able to see past the propaganda that you've been fed your whole life, you begin to question the things that were instilled in you, the values that were instilled in you at a very young age. Like I'm one of these people who were indoctrinated, according to them, when I went to college. Like I became an atheist. I came out as gay. Um, I went from being a conservative to being a, a social democrat. So, yeah, like people change, but that's the natural thing that happens when you get exposed to new ideas and you open your mind, right? You're not in that bubble anymore.